This is May's book two, chapter nine, part two. As an adolescent, she did not experience the change and was perfectly content to remain a tomboy. She met her sister's development and the whole business of mating with a general reticence. Why would lovemaking appeal to anyone? She watched the animals and they didn't seem to enjoy it. She could hear mom and dad and mom didn't seem to enjoy it. She figured she would have to do it and endure it also, and this set her back and out of her free-spiritedness for a time. Soon she developed a certain light in her eyes, like she was not enough already, and began to sneak out nights after her so-called uncles. She was tired of sitting around with the women, wondering what the men were doing. Tired of the guesswork. Did they go to brothels? Probably. Were they out gambling? Most likely. Were they fighting? But of course they were fighting. They're men, drinking and fighting and gambling. So what with all the secrecy? The women, they got tired and gave one another kisses and went to their bedrooms in the dullest of fashion. She would wait until sleep was certain and lights out then slip out her window and head out to find out for herself. She would not be subdued, and in her childlike stealth and free spirit, out in the night when her eyes were adjusted, she felt comfort untold, and the terrain would unfold before her. And she knew she could leave her sandals behind and be remarkably quiet and fleet of foot. And then the small sounds getting larger, and yes, yes, it was them, and she found them spread out in a mile stretch of land. They were no longer her uncles as she knew them. She breathlessly hid and looked all around her, and waited or grew impatient, and jumped out quick to find a better vantage. What she saw would fragment her mind. She lost all sense of time and place.